Hey guys, it's Ian. Um, so I had kind of a productive day today. I uh, got some of the bulbs changed in the car, which I know isn't a big deal. And <clears throat> this is on the 55. Uh, also got uh, the uh, stick shift all uh, lubricated so it doesn't squeak anymore. And I got the uh, fuel gauge working properly. The big thing is the clock. This is the electric, electrically driven, uh, not electrically driven, electrically wound uh, analog clock that is in the dashboard, and it hasn't worked since uh, <clears throat> since we bought her. Uh, so I took it out today and took a look around, uh, and uh, actually got it working. And you wouldn't believe all it took was. Uh, some spring from WD, WD-40 and just loosened up all the gears and stuff and they started working again. Uh, I still don't know if the electric winding, winding part of it works but uh, the points weren't, weren't closed so I think they should be good and I think it should work. I'll test it out tomorrow. But anyway, I always found uh, this old, these old analog uh, you know, machines and stuff interesting because you get to find out how you know people made things work back before they had computers and things and uh, I thought before I uh, started it up and uh, showed you guys you know it working uh, I'd maybe show real quick uh, you know the principles and what uh, makes it work and first I just think it's pretty cool all the little gears and stuff I mean I knew there'd be gears in it I knew it wasn't electronic but still it's Pretty cool just seeing all the little clock gears and stuff in there so you got kind of two levels you got this first level thin layer level with the, the gears that's your actual clock mechanism and all this down here is your electric winding uh, mechanism and uh, basically uh, let me see if I can get a good view of it you got that center shaft right there a lot of gears uh, I don't sure if you can see in the lighting there's a brownish gear on the very bottom that actually has a a uh, spring inside it that's the main winding spring and it is connected to this uh, wing right here there's one here it goes across to the other side over to here and it's a big C shape and you'll see it intersects with another C shape or not C shape but a straight winding you see all those round copper wires that's a uh, electro electromagnet, and basically, uh, when the electromagnet is powered, uh, this end of the magnet and this end of the magnet pull the nearest metal pieces here and here over towards the magnet. And the process of turning this these levers wind the clock. Uh, something interesting about this clock: these clocks are they're only wound for about a minute and a half to two minutes. So if you're actually sitting in the car for a while, you'll actually hear every now and then you'll hear the clock get wound go and you know, and keep running. So it's just kind of interesting that they're always plugged in, but every couple minutes they wind themselves. And I didn't think of it actually being audible, audible but I read an article about a guy sharing some uh, stories from when he was a kid. So anyway, uh, that's basically the principle of the magnet. What's also cool is uh, you see uh, these contact points, these breaker points right here. Point to them right here. Same as you'd see in like a, uh, uh, what is it, a, re uh, sorry, uh, power red relay box. <clears throat> and uh, basically it's, it's, it's neat because when the clock totally unwinds which means this moves this plate moves from here unwinds all the way back to here this is unwound uh, a little pin in there you can't really see it because of the lighting but a pin in there uh, pushes pulls the uh, sorry I'm gonna do it this way this pin right here pulls this breaker closed and that uh completes the circuit which turns on the electromagnet which pulls this back over again opening the points and shutting the uh, circuit back off again 
until it unwinds again, points close, electromag comes on, and it winds it up again. So you're actually going to see that that uh, action right now. I'm going to I'm going to turn on the clock. This will be at least the uh, well. This isn't the first time I've done it, but the first time you're seeing it. Uh, this will be about the at least 18 years, probably more, since this clock has run. So watch the points. I'm going to wind the clock. I'm going to pull this back to the ma magnet plate, and you'll see the points open up again. There you go. You see the, see those open up right there. And there you go. And you can probably hear it ticking ticking away. It's got a little, a little fly gear turning around with the spring on it. And anyway, I just think that's cool. Kind of seeing the uh, you know this sixty year old little clock running again. And if you actually did sit here and watch the whole time, you'd slowly see this uh, plate rise back up here until it's totally unwound and it stops again. You see here is where the power would be plugged in. There's where the ground is. And speed connect, speed uh, adjuster. It's weird. They got a speed adjuster in the back, but they also have one right on right on the front. So I don't know why they need one on the back when you could just easily adjust it on the front. But it's kind of cool, I guess. So anyway, I know it's probably not a very accurate clock and uh, probably prone to failure, but you know I, I just want to make as much as many things on this uh, car operate. You know, and if they can't operate, I'd rather have them fixed and working. I'd like to get the uh, radio working again sometime. I just don't know how to hook it up. Anyway, so that's that, and. Uh, and yeah, all right. So uh, hopefully you found this interesting, and uh, see you later.